Are you just dipping your toes into the world of artificial lighting for photography and have no clue what to buy? Well, after watching this 10 minute video, you're gonna know exactly what you need to get started with artificial lighting for food or product photography. So let's jump straight in. Now, in this video, I'm actually going to be recommending two lights that fall under the category of flash, a speed light and a strobe light. And both of these are perfect for someone who's just getting started in artificial lighting. The best part, both these flash units cost between $79 and $229 and are the most affordable lights I've seen on the market for food and product photographers. Now, before I actually tell you exactly what these lights are, I just want to mention that under the umbrella of artificial lighting, you have continuous lights as well as flash. And today's video is actually just covering the flash part. So for your information, I'm definitely going to be doing another video all about continuous lights. So if that's something that's on your radar, then stay tuned. But today is all about flash. Now here's why I recommend starting off with flash over continuous lights. When you're using flash as your choice of light, as opposed to continuous lights, you have utmost control over your lighting. Flash has the ability to basically kill off any ambient light that's in your room, whether it's coming from a very large window that you can't block off, like maybe a skylight, or perhaps you're in a restaurant which has a lot of overhead lights that may be interfering with your set. Now, I'm a complete control freak. I don't want any light pollution coming into my set, and that's why flash will always be my go-to over continuous lighting for still photography. Flash also has a lot more power output than a continuous light. So that's actually another reason why I prefer to opt for flash when it comes to still photography. Another advantage of flash is that it actually has the ability to freeze any motion much better than continuous lighting. So when you're using a flash, it basically emits a short burst of light and that freezes your subject, which makes it possible for you to capture sharp detail images for splash, pores, and whisks. Continuous lighting, on the other hand, can cause a motion blur when photographing anything that moves. And then flash lighting also provides more consistent lighting from shot to shot. When you use continuous light, the temperature, the intensity of the light, it can change over time. And this can lead to inconsistent results in your photos. Now with flash, on the other hand, you can actually ensure that every shot has the exact same amount of light. And then finally, flash lighting is generally more portable than continuous lighting. So this makes it a lot easier to use in a variety of locations and settings, such as outdoor shoots or moving around in a restaurant, and especially when you don't have access to power outlets. Now, just because flash is my preference for food photography, it might not be the right choice for you. So perhaps you're looking for something that's more long-term, or maybe you have a larger budget than what I've mentioned today. Perhaps you're not a beginner and you're more advanced. Or maybe you do videography or even product photography in your work. And all of these would actually require different recommendations. So if you really want to pinpoint the exact light that's right for you based on your goals, based on your needs, based on your budget, on your space, then I highly recommend you actually sign up for my free masterclass, which is going to break down and pinpoint the exact equipment you need as an individual based on your needs. I'll also be going through how to make your light look as natural as possible. And I'll give you my three-step formula that can guarantee that you'll be able to master artificial lighting. So make sure you sign up to that using the link in the description box. So with that out of the way, let's dive into exactly what's the best artificial flashlight if you're just starting out. Now, my first recommendation is actually a speed light. And my speed light of choice would be a Godox V863. Now, this particular speed light is currently on the market for $229, which I think is a reasonable amount to spend because of what you get. This particular model has batteries that are rechargeable, which is a reason, by the way, that it's slightly more expensive than the other cheaper Godox speed lights, which only run on AA batteries. Now, fully charged batteries on this speed light will last a good 600 flashes or so. You also have the ability to have smaller incremental steps in power in between the larger steps. 
It also comes with a modeling light that can be super helpful. And then the recycling time is also really reasonable as well as the power output. So lots of good things going for this Godox flash unit. Now, the first time I actually saw one of these flashes was when I was actually at an event. And I actually noticed that the photographer had it mounted on top of the hot shoe of the camera. But a quick tip for you, if you are new to artificial lighting for food and product, then the best way to use this flash for our needs would be to actually mount it onto a light stand. Now that means you actually need a trigger on your camera so that your camera can actually speak to your light and they basically can communicate and fire when required. And this also gives us the ability to really manipulate the light using various modifiers, as well as using things like distance and height to further control the lighting. So, so far we've got our light, which is our speed light, and then we've also got our trigger. And so the third thing you need is actually a stand to actually place your light on top of. Now the issue is you can't actually mount your light or your speed light directly onto this particular stand. So you're gonna need something called a mount, which basically allows you to screw your speed light onto the actual light stand. And then you actually insert your speed light into the mount. So far, we need four things. We've got our speed light, we've got our trigger, we've got a light stand, and we also have a mount. And I've linked to all of this exact gear in my gear guide that you can find in the description box below. So just click on the link, download it for free. It has the exact links to all the equipment I've just mentioned. Now, one thing you'll notice in the gear guide is that it's actually split up into different camera brands. And the reason for that is your speed light is actually quite specific to the brand of camera you're using. Now, if you use this exact gear system that I've linked to, you'll achieve images that look similar to this and this. And as you can see, these are very trendy hard light images. So if you want a more softer look, such as this and this, and you want to diffuse your lights so that it looks more natural and softer, or perhaps you want a more dark and moody look like this and this, then you're gonna actually need a modifier. And if you're just starting out, I highly recommend a five in one reflector that you likely already have in your kit as a natural light photographer. Again, all the recommendations are in the gear guide below. Okay, enough about speed lights, let's move on to strobe lights. Now, if you're a beginner and you're budget conscious, then I highly recommend the Godox MS300 as your starter strobe light. This strobe light starts off at literally $79. Now here's some reasons why I think this is a great strobe to get started off with, besides being so low in cost. The power output of this light is 300 watts, which is a really good amount of power, especially for this price point. And then you also have 50 steps between full power all the way to one over 32 when it comes to power output. You can probably see that although the steps between the powers are not as great as say the Godox 8400 Pro, and obviously the lowest power is also not as low as the Godox 8400, the price point of $79 reflects this as compared to $600 for the 8400. Now the recycling time on the strobe is also between 0.1 seconds to 1.8 seconds. And in case you're wondering what recycling time is, then basically it's the amount of time the strobe needs to recover or come back to full power before it fires again. And this is an important spec that you wanna keep in mind, especially if you're shooting GIFs or on burst mode for things like pouring or whisking or splash shots. This light also has a modeling lamp, which is great for beginners. So you can actually see where your shadows are and how they're behaving similar to continuous lights. Now, one thing you wanna bear in mind with this strobe is that it actually only runs on electricity. So you actually need to plug this into a power source, unlike the speed light I mentioned before, which runs on batteries. And then finally, the trigger I mentioned earlier, as well as the light stand are perfect for this strobe unit as well. Now, at this stage, a lot of photographers ask me, well, you recommended the five in one reflector, but I notice a lot of food photographers are using a softbox or maybe a scrim. Should I be using that? Or perhaps you've seen somebody use an umbrella as their modifier. What's the best choice of modifier for you? So if you wanna know what my favorite modifiers are that I think are perfect for food photographers, then make sure you check out this video next where I'm spilling the tea on all the modifiers that are a must in my kit. I'll catch you in that next video.